bringing back some fireside chat. So I'm here to talk about training with George Brink. A gentleman, I don't recall his first name, the last name is Stein, emailed me and asked about training with George Brink. I'm like, you know what? I need to start making some videos talking about some of the various people I trained and the experiences I had. So I first met George at a meet in Venice Beach in California. It was after I won the USAPL Teenage Nationals, which is like a fun push-pull meet in Venice Beach, California. I had actually heard about George before that though, because I remember it was funny. I was listening, I used to listen to country music station every morning when I'd wake up in the shower. So I was, you know, listening to me and they'd always talk about the local events and things of that nature going on in the area. So I remember was, this was, I was going to Moore Park Junior College. I was living with the Don Machia, Jill Ostrong co-author. We were living, we had a place in Simi Valley. So I remember the country music station was 100.7. And what they did is I, I was, they always, they're talking about the local events and said, okay, Masters powerlifter, he wasn't 50 yet, he's 49 years old. You know, sets a world record in the deadlift. And I'm thinking, you know, I've been to some gyms and there were older lifters that claimed they'd set world records. I mean, they're nowhere like near world records, it's like, you know, of, of real life. It's like, you know, 350, you know, 58 world record or whatever, you know, weighing 400 pounds or, or something like that. And you're like, dude, like the UPS guy that just tried lifting for the first time can you know do more than that? What, what are you what are you talking about? So I thought it was one of those deals. Three hundred fifty-seven point five. Whoa, that's not that's not that's not pounds. That's kilos. Seven or eight pounds. Oh wow, this guy's legit. So I'm like, I was getting re since I was getting ready for teenage nationals. These meets, I didn't contact George because I was smart enough then to know not to change my training. I, I had a routine. You know, the body thrives in the routine. And I was not gonna alter that for anybody, any time, any place. I had a mission to go on, win the USAPL Teenage Nationals. So anyways, hit that meet, total 1824, get best lifter, blah, blah, blah. Go on to Venice Beach, have a pretty good meet there. Uh, meet up with George there. Um, he tries like 804 at that um, at that, at that that meet in, in Venice. And he was actually pretty close to that. I mean, for just sort of a fun thing, joking around. He was super nice, super encouraging man that guy's a cool guy so anyways start training for the usapl um usa teenage national so at that point every saturday i get in my car i live in, i live in santa barbara so i moved back to santa barbara california i drive from santa barbara to yorba linda um or the orange county strength usually yorba linda barbara club at that point so it was owned by paul leonard i trained with paul or labar gary garcia those guys so i drive 137 miles each way every saturday to squat so my squat was going crazy. The guys were awesome. They were giving me great pointers. They were giving me great encouragement, a lot of camaraderie, a lot of great training, and just a kick-ass mindset. It was great. So my, my squat's going up. Bench press, I've always been able to bench press well. It's just you know something I'm good at. So that, that was going well like normal. So training for that meet, uh, my PR was 705 in the squat before, a couple months earlier. Trained up, got a 727 there. Um, Nice PR. It was much deeper than the 705. I think the 705 was close. Um, the 727 buried it. I mean, I, it was like, I, I don't think I could hit 728. It was I'm very proud of that squat. So go from there to bench press, hit an easy 501 and barely missed 523. And my deadlift training had not been going well for that meet, but I, you know what? Like at the end of the day, as I tell people, you know, I'm going for a total. So my bench and my squat were up enough that I was gonna hit a nice PR in total regardless of deadlift. So I wasn't super concerned. At the end of the day, it didn't matter to me if my squat and my and my bench, or excuse me, if my, my deadlift's down 200 pounds, but my squat's up 150, my bench is up 150, I've still had 100 pounds in my total at the end of the day. That's all I care about. So not too concerned, get in there. And you know what, go in, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna go, my PR was 650. It's all up 6.11, I'm warming up, there's no one in hell. It's gonna go up, something was off in my back. Lower the deadlift to 5.01, and I guess just, and even like 4.05 felt heavy warming up, but the 5.01 came up like an empty bar. Okay, fine, I'm ready. Go to 6.11, I felt okay then. It didn't even move, I'm like, crap. Okay, something's not good here. So I go see George Brink deadlift, and uh, George, George, I still have a vivid recollection of the way his face looked, look, it's about to explode. Pulled 804 at 51 years of age. Granted, that was after squatting 716 and benching 440. I mean, it'd been very interesting to um, see what George could have done if he did deadlift only meets, but he was always saying uh, the bench and the squat, they warmed me up. So 
at that point, um, my problem has never been not taking action. It might be like, you know, shooting first, asking questions later. So I said, okay, what do I need to do here? George is off and he kept, he kept encouraging me at the meet. We seemed to hit it off. And then, um, it, I called him up and he's like, Hey, I said, Hey George, um, I want to train with you. Um, what do I need to do? He said, well, you teach me how to bench press. Um, I'll teach you how to deadlift and we'll call it even. I said, great. So then he calls me the next day. He's like, guess what? I retired. He's a cop. He retired from being a cop. He did kind of like, I guess I had some kind of good deal to retire. So he retired. So you will train with you a lot. So anyways, I continually go down to your Belinda Barbie club on Saturdays. That's going great. But I start deadlifting with George and George is like very old school, even as a cop, you know, I, I, I'd put money. George never gave out like some kind of petty parking ticket or, or just nonsense. He wasn't like, you know, seeing a, a, a kid, you know, kid and harassing him for no reason. It was funny because we, we trained in Ventura a lot and a lot of gangbangers in Ventura. Every single one we'd see at the gym was always very respectful and nice to George because I felt George treated him very well. Or just at least, I don't know about, treated him respectfully, like he was not petty. If George came down on you, you you deserved it. He, he was old school. He was not throw. you know, it, it wasn't, you know, hey, you jaywalked him to throw you in jail type of deal. He was not a chicken shit guy like that. So anyways, from there, George and I start training. So I'm going to tell you about the training. So I'm like, hey, George, what are we doing for deadlifts? He's like, I'm going to put you on this 21-week cycle of training, of, so, so what I did is I, he said he hooked up with some guy from Norway. Uh, he'd been in like a terrible car accident. So he started lifting weights at 37 years old and it was just to rehab himself from a car. He said before that he'd been like a really heavy drinker, you know, smoke, uh, smoked like three or four packs of cigarettes a day kind of guy. And like he got in a terrible car accident, quit the cigarettes and said, I mean, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna rehab this. But in the process of rehabbing, somehow he hooked up with this Norwegian powerlifter. And um, he liked the rehab so much, he stuff with it. And he, he started doing power if he meets, he's 37 years old. He had his best lift at 51. And, and, and so anyways, what happened was he, the routine, the, the guy put him on, he put me on. So what you did, training with George is not a joke. Okay, it's very hard. So um, he's like, well, you do whatever I tell you to do. I said, you know what? If you, if you tell me to go by the back fence right there and eat dog crap, and that's gonna make my deadlift go up, let's do it. I said, okay, cool. So the first, he's like, be ready to work. And he, he handed me this this, um, this car, these three by five cars with each workout written on them. He's like, okay, you need to deadlift 700. Here's what you gotta do. So what we did is we did five sets of 10 stiff-legged deadlifts off a four inch block with no belt. You had to touch the ground on every single rep. So what you would do is you'd go up to, you'd work up heavier and heavier and heavier. The third set would be your heaviest set then you do, you know, so for instance, like when I go up to 405, it might be like, you know, three, it would be like 315, you know, 350, you know, 365, 355, 405, you know, 330, 330, that kind of thing. So you go up heavier every single week. And by the end, you're, you know, it's, it's brutal. Of um, The volume was insane. So you do that every single week, seven weeks in a row, five sets of 10, stiff legged deadlifts off a four inch block with no belt. After that, you superset shrugs, um, lat pull downs, um, then you go, then you would go into a bent, you know, like a, a bent over kind of dump, it was sort of like a bent over kind of dumbbell row, really heavy, but the, then we got too strong for those and would, ha would have to use um, barbells on that. And then you would do an, you would do different um, ab exercises. So you do all that stuff right in a circuit, right in a row, and um, you do that three, that circuit three times after. Okay, so that was for seven weeks. The assistance works stayed the same the whole time, but after the first seven weeks, it was no longer a circuit. You just kept pushing the weights heavier and heavier. And um, after that, we went five sets of five off the four inch block deficit deadlift. So you do your best to maintain regular technique and you do five sets of five and go heavier each week on the deficit deadlift. So it was just like every single week was a little bit heavier, like a progressive overload. And you always walked away thinking, how in the hell am I gonna do this the next week? I literally felt my insides come out my rectum and I'm gonna have to go up again next week. How in the hell can I do this? You know what? Shit, I'm training with a legend. This is George Brink. I'm not gonna let this guy down. I get to train with George. I'll die 
before I miss a weight. So that was my mentality. So every single week we go five, six, five. So in the final seven weeks was um, off the floor. It was uh, singles, doubles, and triples, okay? So prior to this, the 21 weeks, okay? So I'd been up to 650. That wasn't a deadlift seat, didn't add a whole lot, maybe 20, 25 pounds. I regressed backwards to below um, 6.11, to below 6.11, that didn't move. And the first week with George, I wanted she to do a regular deadlift. And we went to 495 and I couldn't get off the ground. Something was going on weird. So that's what, kind of where we started at. And he's like, no, no, we gotta do that 21 cycle. So fast forward to the end of this, I pulled a very, very easy 672. I didn't wear a suit for this one, raw. And that was after a big PR in the squat, a 782 Ooh. squat. And, um, and it was a 573 bench. Um, so that was crazy that I had gone up that much. So it worked much. So that we, but anyway, so the last seven weeks was heavy doubles, singles, and triples. So we'd go extremely heavy on the rows. We'd go, you know, over 405 on the rows, depending. It was kind of, I would just try to do whatever, whatever George did, I would do. On the shrugs, we we figured out at first we get up to a, a thousand thirty-five because we had these thin forty-fives you can fit in the bar, and that's how far we, George actually did them pretty good. I mean, I think I'd pick it up. I literally be like this. But just feeling that weight, it was insane. And that's what we did. So we went from there, and then from there, we kind of refined the training technique. You know, the training technique, my, my deadlift eventually training with George, um, got up to um, to 770. I didn't actually hit that in a meet yet, because um, some meets got canceled, things like that. But I did hit 770 training with George. So it got, that was about, um, so that was 2001 originally. And then in 2003, like I had the 672, I got the 770. And then George, in that time, um, George um, got up to 804 again on a second attempt. He he literally got up 821, and he made and he, and he dropped to the top. So that's what you know. So some of the things I learned from, and then we'll tell you a little bit of the bench pressing too. So the bench pressing, George, I want you to design the workout. It's great, you know. So here I am, you know. I, people ask me to start a coaching business. Here I am training. One of the best, you know, three lift lifters in the world is Masters, maybe the best of the time. And that, and I'm, you know, part of his bench pressing and his bench press went from, um, he went from like 365 up to 440 in, the, in those few years. Well, anyways, like I, I just got one thing we got to add to the programming. I'm saying like, dude, I can't believe I have to program for you. Like we'll do whatever you say, let's, let's do it. So we did these crazy heavy overloads. And with the overloads would be, um, it, we had this bench there it was built you'd laid i got a video of it on youtube if you guys want to see it just look at the overload bench press and it allows them to chest spot over you we'd go super heavy and tr attempt to do like well over your max i go up to you know 1035 pounds on that and have george assisting me though you know the whole way up and I, he make me push as much as i can so we do that you know sometimes that was his thing um i wouldn't do that if i could do that over thankfully it was never hurt but the, what you get, what do you get from that? So like the way we come into training, there's absolutely no fear of missing a weight. I've missed plenty of weights in training with George. After that initial cycle was planned to perfection, but after that we started getting a little crazy and I missed plenty of weight. And George would always talk about, you know, okay, next year, you know, we are pulling 900, things like that. So what the other thing I got from George, besides showing how he never talked about his age, all he would talk about, never problems, just possibilities. He would talk about when he's gonna pull 900, when I'm gonna pull 900, when I'm gonna surpass him. It was always just go in there. I mean, it was like a Tony Robbins seminar on steroids, but it wasn't It wasn't BS. It was like George really believed it. He made me believe it. Like I literally felt invincible in that gym with him. It was funny because, you know, here I am, went over 300 pounds, living out in California and, and you know, I didn't think I don't think females anywhere like particularly like the bloated 300 pound power lifter, but with George, it'd be like, oh yeah, you know, like that 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 girl in there, you know, it's like a 10 out of 10 is like checking you out while you're deadlifting, and I'm going up and talking to him or something after the workout with crazy sky high confidence, just because George had instilled that in me. George made me believe I could do whatever I wanted. So that that belief I got from George, I got that really high volume training from George. I've refined it to what works better for me since then, or other, you know, done similar cycles with other people, but kind of added in deloads, things like that. 
But those are the two of the big takeaways I got from George is, is you know, belief and heavy, high volume training. It was like never like, oh, I'm, you know, 51 years old. I can't do this. I never heard any of that kind of talk from George. I got, you know, hey, you know what? Like, I'm gonna be hitting my best day left in my 60s. So George eventually kind of, he retired and moved away. I mean, he had retired, but he moved away. And um, he, George passed away, I think, two years ago. Great training partner. And we actually, um, you know, I would train with him and we started, um, we had, he was done powerlifting, but we kept talking and, you know, we'd talk every six months or so. Just a great guy, great powerlifter, you know, great human being, somebody I, I learned a ton from. And it, I was so honored and so grateful to train with him, you know, and I, I appreciate that email about him. So kind of reminisce here. Did us all with no notes, more heartfelt off the top of my head. And I'm, I'm sure George Brink pulled his first 900 with St. Peter watching up in heaven. Thank you.